Hello friends, uh, in this video tutorial we will be talking about uh, anaerobic metabolism and a very brief overview of anaerobic metabolism. So let me take a color first. So let's take the blue color. Okay. So, okay. Anaerobic metabolism, uh, so let's talk about uh, what it means actually. Anaerobic means uh, in, the, in the absence of air. So an aerobic, aerobic means in the presence of air. Anaerobic means in the absence of air. So absence of air. And when, when, when I say, once I say air, air means here presence of oxygen. You know, because in metabolic pathways, oxygen plays a vital role. Because if oxygen is present, it helps in all those several different uh, extra rounds of metabolism to produce more, more energy more energy right so in presence of oxygen sorry in presence of oxygen that is more energy so in absence of oxygen there will be less energy that's a very important concept to understand right so e every time once we're talking about the anaerobic metabolism we are talking about the metabolic pathways in the absence of oxygen and it will ultimately produce lesser energy. So let's talk about the different stages of this anaerobic metabolism. Mainly the anaerobic metabolism that we usually see in bacteria, inside the bacterial cell are kind of called as a fermentation. They are called as fermentation. That's the other name of this anaerobic metabolic pathway. Fermentation can be of different types. It is kind of ethanol fermentation or it can be lactic acid fermentation. In both the type of fermentations, they are the part of anaerobic metabolism where the cell gets very less amount of oxygen and for that reason, they will produce less energy because they will uh, pass that glucose or the food source and break it down into very small, uh, I mean very tiny stages. So let's talk about them. It begins with uh, the anaerobic model. So let's talk about the glucose over here. So we're having the glucose, you know, glucose is a six carbon compound, right? So once we know that glucose is the general food source for all this metabolic pathway, this is the simplest food source for all the metabolic pathway. It requires certain energy for starting of this pathway. So glucose is then break down into pyruvate because pyruvate is uh, the middle uh, or it, it is one of the most important intermediate of the metabolic pathways in cell because from pyruvate it can move towards aerobic metabolic pathway it can move towards anaerobic metabolic pathway now for the production of pyruvate from glucose they produce four atps because four adp is taken and four atps are generated via the pathway and this whole pathway for production of pyruvate from glucose that means uh, production of C carbon compound which is pyruvate from glucose which is a 6 carbon compound this whole process will actually called as a glycolysis pathway and this glycolysis pathway is kind of common it is present in bacteria it is present in uh, eukaryotes and all all of them but after this pyruvate is produced the rest of the processes are kind of very much specialized in special type of cells so if we look at here from the pyruvate towards the anaerobic pathway, it can go towards two different anaerobic metabolic pathway. One is go for the fermentation of ethanol or alcohol fermentation, another one is the fermentation of lactic acid. Now from the pyruvate, if it want to go to fermentation of the lactic acid, that is a one step process. From the pyruvate, it can directly produce lactic acid via the process called lactic acid fermentation with the certain enzymes called lactic acid dehydrogenase. In turn, if they need to produce alcohol from the pyruvate, they need to have a further intermediate called acetaldehyde. From the acetaldehyde, then they will produce alcohol by releasing amount of carbon dioxide. Now remember, if they are traveling from pyruvate to alcohol via the ethanol fermentation, in that process, it, they will produce carbon dioxide including water. On the other hand, if they produce lactic acid, they will produce lactic acid and water. In both these processes, they will recycle the NADH, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. So this, they, they actually recycle this NADH because in the previous stages of glycolysis, 
they uptake all this NAD, nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide and convert them into NADH plus H plus, right? But during the process of fermentation or anaerobic metabolism, this NADH are then shift back to NAD plus so that NAD free NAD plus are generated and they can be taken in the other stages of metabolic pathway. Okay, so this is the anaerobic metabolic scheme. But there is a aerobic metabolic scheme coming from pyruvic acid and here comes the distance. So from this pyruvic acid, they can use this aerobic me metabolism. Now remember the aerobic metabolism always work in, in the, inside the mitochondria, which is a specialized compartment inside the cell and it's only present in eukaryotic cells. But all of this process of fermentation, alcohol fermentation or lactic acid fermentation are carried out in cytoplasm. So, if you look at here, the process of aerobic metabolism will generate 34 ATPs. But in case of the anaerobic metabolism, the glycolysis is common. So, it, it will generate 4 ATP. Then, the ultimate process of uh, fermentation will generate further 2 ATPs. So, ultimately, it will generate 6 to 8 ATPs maximum. But in case of aerobic fermentation, it will generate 34 ATPs. So, you know, in aerobic metabolism, it will produce more and more energy, but they will require the presence of oxygen for doing that. Okay, so that's kind of it, guys, and I hope that's helpful. Thank you.